Good evening. There were lines around the block yesterday when Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince opened in theaters at midnight. The sellout crowds were just another reminder of the enduring appeal of this multi-billion dollar brand. Before the movies, the novels. Heart-pounding, often harrowing tales of a young wizard and his friends battling the forces of evil that introduced a generation to reading. But once upon a time, Harry Potter existed only in the mind of a struggling, out-of-work, single mom who simply decided one day she wanted to write a book. And when J.K. Rowling began putting words to paper, it would be magic. It's November 2006. J.K. Rowling is working in secret on the final chapters of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows in a hotel room in Edinburgh. Yeah, I've helpfully made the note for myself. This will need very serious planning. <laughs> I don't know when I wrote that. Um, and I was quite right in that. The Harry Potter series has taken 17 years to write. It's an epic saga of childhood confusion, danger, and adventure. But it's more than just a children's story. Behind the witchcraft and the wizardry lies an intensely moral fable about good and evil, love and hatred, life and death. The books have sold more than 300 million copies. The first five movies have earned $4 billion worldwide. How has she done it? And where has it all come from? Fellow novelist James Runcie spent a year with Rowling to try and find out. Really nice, Dad. Oh, thank you. Inside Rowling's country house in Scotland, north of Edinburgh, Runcie began his documentary by asking her some direct questions. What's your favorite virtue? Courage. What vice do you most despise? Bigotry. What are you most willing to forgive? Gluttony. What's your most marked characteristic? I'm a trier. What are you most afraid of? Losing someone I love. What's the quality you most like in a man? Morals. What's the quality you most like in a woman? Generosity. What do you most value about your friends? Tolerance. What's your principal defect? Short fuse. What's your favorite occupation? Writing. What's your dream of happiness? <sighs> Happy family. The desire for a happy family comes in part from a difficult childhood. Like her orphaned hero, Harry Potter, Joanne Rowling was brought up on suburban British streets like the one the Dursleys live on in the books. She lived outside Bristol in the south of England. Her house even had a cupboard under the stairs. But unlike Harry Potter, Rowling didn't have to sleep there. She shares the same birthday as Harry Potter, the 31st of July. And together with her sister Di, endured similar childhood traumas, large and small. What were your haircuts like? Oh, oh <laughs> that's, that's just not, that's just wrong. They were terrible. That, honestly, this they were is terrible. child abuse. They were terrible. I don't want to show it though. They were, they... I've got it here. But I'm that's not, not right, that, look at my fringe. <laughs> I don't think anyone can stomach that for long. Fringe is British for bangs. Joanne is the one on the right. When Rowling was nine years old, the family moved out of the suburbs to the country near a forest. I'm very drawn to forests, and it's my favorite part of the Hogwarts grounds. The advantage of a forest is it can be so many things. It can be a place of enchantment. You never imagine a crowd in a forest, it's a solitary place. Is it because it used to be a place of shelter and safety to us, I suppose? So I think I, I'm very drawn to them, even though they can be spooky. Joanne wrote stories from an early age. Not only was there a forest nearby, but the family even lived next to a graveyard. The Rollings lived in this house. 
Joanne and her sister Di earned extra pocket money cleaning nearby St. Luke's Church. I cannot overstate how cold it got in this church in winter when we were cleaning it. It was freezing. We must be in here loads. Because we used to sign this book all the time. Oh, God, I know. Oh, look, it's me. There I am. <laughs> me and Di together. Joanne Rowling, age 12. Diane Rowling, age 10. It's a name I stole for Harry Potter, for an unpleasant character as well. Hide the book, lock it away. <laughs> Forgotten about that. <laughs> yes. Joanne was the only member of the family to attend church services regularly and was baptized here at the church at the age of 11. Do you believe in God? Yes. I do, I do struggle with it. I, 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 you know, I couldn't pretend that I'm not doubt-ridden about a lot of things, and that would be one of them, but I would say yes. Do yeah. you think there's a life beyond this of some kind? Yes, I think I do. Joanne's religious beliefs and her thoughts about love, death, heaven, and hell were tested when her mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1980. I was 15 when she was diagnosed, but we now know that she was showing signs probably from when I was about 10 or 11. She would have odd um, losses of feeling in limbs, um, her balance. Her balance actually was, was poor for a long time. And then it just got worse and worse and she decided it was time to visit the doctor, but she wasn't expecting to hear anything. And then, you know, a year of tests and there we were. She had a very virulent form of the illness. And at that time, there were no drug treatments at all. They said, well, you've got multiple sclerosis. See you. The illness had a devastating impact on the two girls, particularly as they found it difficult to talk to their father. One of the reasons Harry Potter is so full of idealized father figures, Hagrid, Dumbledore, and Sirius Black, is that Joanne's relationship with her own father was far from ideal. I was very frightened of my father for a very long time. And, but also tried, well, it's a common combination, isn't it? I also tried desperately to get his approval and, and um, make him happy, I suppose. And then there came a point quite shamingly late in life where I couldn't do that anymore. And so I've not, I haven't had any contact with my father now for a few years. Joanne says the absence of any meaningful relationship with her father and the long, slow loss of her mother are two of the most important influences on her writing. Anne Rowling died in 1990. She never knew about Harry Potter or the magical journey her daughter was about to begin. For all you trivia buffs, J.K. Rowling doesn't have a middle name. She added the initial K after her grandmother, Kathleen, at the request of her publisher, who apparently felt that boys wouldn't want to read a book written by a woman. <laughs> 